it's like when there's when there's unhealthy bacteria in the gut there's basically sludge it's making and i think you mentioned it before where it's like you're walking in sludge it's like the body is operating in sludge yeah so it's like taxing the mitochondria is ta like i'm seeing it as like taxing the mitochondria which is destroying it but then it's also taxing all the other organs that are looking to detox the body but also process the nutrients that are coming into it yeah it's, it's yeah. very it's it's like man I, i'm just it's hitting me how how important the environment in the gut is especially when it comes to fatigue Bless up, bless up, my guy, Mr. Hawaii. Yes, Ooh, Mr. Man. Travels, man, my our guy. Hey, everybody, welcome to It's More Than Black or White. We are your hosts. I'm Paul. This is Brian. Happy to have you with us, man. This is exciting times, man. Uh, I'm, I love when we have these episodes, and I love uh, being able to present information to you. And I'm super excited because I'm like vibing super high right now. Brian just came back from a vacation. He's about to freaking get married. Yeah. Let's get married. Do, Is that do, me do, do. at the altar? Oh, yo, oh, yeah. <laughs> that was a classic, Listen, man. That was like high school, man. Brother, that was the jam, yeah. man. I was like, yeah. I didn't know nothing about marriage, but I was like, I know Jagged S. So I was like, oh. <laughs> So listen, man, we're excited because this is a really, this is a really special and powerful time, man. We're excited um, to be here and share this information. We're also excited about this union that Brian is going, is, is going to experience. So today we're going to talk about a topic because when a lot of stuff is going on in life, right, Brian, what, what, what can happen? Like when you got a lot of stuff going on or when you've experienced a lot of people that you work with, they got a lot of stuff going on. What's something? What's something that you commonly see is happening happening for them? Man? Uh, it's so hard to change their body composition in a positive way because they're just so like just overly stressed, you know. And on a like a like a physiological way, th their thyroid starts slowing down because their body thinks it's dying when it's under stress. You're storing more body fat, and it just it's just like a downward spiral, and they mm -hmm. get just feel like. They're just like lugging a truck around with them the whole time because they're just so they're just so so stressed out from all those just everyday life and not be able to handle the stress. And again, it's not really the stress itself. It's how people handle the stress, how people perceive the stress, which causes it. Yeah. So, yeah, I see a lot of people. They're just so beat the shit. Then they come in and they think getting a great workout is the key to everything. And they think they can out their their great workout quote unquote, will outperform their shitty lifestyle. And it does, doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> it actually exacerbates the issue and makes it worse. Yeah, and that's that's far from a good thing. Far from a good thing. And mm -hmm. the people, the reason why I'm asking Brian this is because, like, again, at the time of this recording, we're still in the beginning of the year, beginning of the new year. There's a lot of commitments and resolutions that are out there about getting in shape and taking care of your health. A lot of times when you, people go through these transitions, there can be a lot of stress and there can be a lot of fatigue, a lot of being um, this, this sensation or this experience of being run down, uh, really beat down, beat up, especially as, you're, as your body's moving into something new or if there's some breakdowns. So if you're a person that is experiencing fatigue, like you think you're doing everything right, and mm -hmm. you're still tired as a mug. This episode's for you. All right. So uh, we're going to talk about fatigue today, and we're going to break it down from a couple different perspectives. So uh, get your notepads out here. Um, listen, we're, we're we're not medical professionals, man. We we don't play them on TV, uh, on YouTube a little. But like our main thing is this is from our experience and our research. So um, listen, see your doctor, do whatever you got to do. Our intention here is to provide you with insight to support and up-level your health and well-being. So um, let's get into it, man. Like, so B, when, first of all, when you hear the word fatigue, what comes to mind? Overly stressed. That comes to my mind right, right away on a mental, emotional level. On a, on a physiological level, just being the nerd that I am, 
Um, I look at it as a mitochondria deficiency. So people mm -hmm. are like, what the hell is a mitochondria? Yeah, so to give you yep. an idea of like what mitochondria is, it's basically like the power plants of the cell. Not to mention mitochondria actually makes up roughly about 10% of your, our body weight. So it's a big portion of our, of our genetic makeup. And so with poor energy production at a cellular level can make you feeling tired. And again, mitochondria make energy more particularly with something called ATP, and it keeps each cell in your body functioning well. So damage to your mitochondria is the primary reason for people feeling fatigued. So, I mean, Paul and I, you know, we've coached probably thousands of people in our lifetime combined. So, you know, so many people are tired, they're obese, they have cancer, dementia, and or have heart disease. So when your mitochondria is deficient, your food store, your food gets actually stored as fat. And it makes it feel like you're, like I said before, like you're dragging a truck behind you. And one of the reasons, too, we talk about it in our testosterone, two-part testosterone thing, is mitochondria, it makes all your steroid hormones. It makes you all your testosterone. So when you start losing mitochondria or your body gets depleted of mitochondria, you can't make all your sex and your steroid hormones anymore. And just, just having a low testosterone, like we talked about before, just makes you feel like crap. Uh, a couple other things, too. As you, as you age, your mitochondria depletes. And in most cases, as, as you get older, only about 50% of your mitochondria works at an optimal level. So, which again, means you actually have less oxygen in the body, which depletes energy. And I can't say this like clearly enough how many times, like I'm going to repeat myself, your mitochondria determines your whole health. So that's a, basically a quick synapse of, you know, keeping it, keeping it easy. Yeah. So cliff so, node version of the mitochondria. So it, so uh, what I'm hearing is, and that was that was really good, though. Like, thank you for that. Um, what I'm hearing is like mitochondria is it's it's basic it's it's a key element in physical function because if the mitochondria is damaged, what I was hearing you say it was like basically it's gonna fail to allow the body to process a lot of what the body's taking in. So instead of the body being able to process it the body stores it as fat. Yeah, right? mitochondria, like I said before, so you're basically your power plants. It's like the it's like the energy of your whole body. Without mitochondria, there is no energy. So Because our mitochondria makes ATP. Mm, adreno, mm -hmm. uh, oh, shoot. Adenosine okay. triphosphate. Yes, that's the one. You spell that in Scrabble, you're, you're winning. You're game oh, over, man. Listen, you, listen people, write that <laughs> word down. That could yeah. be a whole heap of points, man. Yeah. Um, th this is very, this is, uh, uh, you know, every time we have these topics and these conversations about these these things that few people ever really discuss, B, it, it, it blows my mind because, damn, something like paying attention to our mitochondria and its mm -hmm. function and keeping it strong could be a key cog that impacts so many other things for our optimal health and well-being. It's crazy. Definitely. So uh, you were saying the the age is something that damages um, the mitochondria. Stress damages the mitochondria. Um, uh, I'm well, age itself I'm doesn't. Yeah, age itself doesn't damage it. You just lose mitochondria as you get older, and then as you get older, your body doesn't is not efficient in the ATP production as it used to be when you were younger. It's like, you know, you ever see like a kid, like, you know, like I have a two-year-old running around right now. That kid, man, he can go for 30 hours without stopping. Yeah. That kid's running on full capacity. You know, I look at him, my, my ATP is getting depleted. <laughs> you, know? So, you know, so it's, it's oh, as you get yeah. older, you know, it's, yeah, it's basically like, you know, just dealing with stress and toxicity build up and everything like that it's not running it's not running as efficient as it used to be when you were younger so what are some of the key things that um that damage the mitochondria yeah there's a lot i mean i would look into so a lot of you a lot of you like you need, you need a healthy liver and you need a healthy gut i mean we, we can start there most people have so many toxins in their liver I know if you guys want to check back, we have a whole, I don't want to repeat myself, but we have a whole um, episode on 
uh, detoxing and yeah. stuff like that and, and fasting, which will help you detox your liver. But I would always look at that first. Um, actually, probably first I would look at it is your is your gut microbiome, you know, how healthy you are. Most people have dysbiosis. Uh, for you know, people out there that don't know what dysbiosis is, it's basically too much unfriendly bacteria. You should have about an 85 to 15 percent good to bad back, good to bad bacteria in your body. Most people have the complete opposite. And when you have a bad bacteria overwhelming your body, it's very hard to make healthy mitochondria, ATP. And people are just sluggish. I mean, think about it. How many people, if you have a stomach ache, do you have a lot of energy? No. <laughs> you know, you don't have, you just feel like crap. I never met somebody with a lot of energy or in a good mood that has stomach ache. I'm not saying just because you have dysbiosis, you're always going to feel like those stomach issues, but majority of your neurotransmitters are actually produced in your gut. 90% of your serotonin is produced in your gut and that's your feel good hormone. So people that have a shitty diet, they're going to have, it's very hard to not to have shitty thoughts. It's right. not that it's not it's very hard to not be like depressed or be moody or have mood swings and stuff like that. So fix your micro gut biome. And you can, there's a lot of things that cause your microbiome to kind of get jacked up. You know, big thing is alcohol. You know, we all know like, you know, alcohol, alcohol is a poison in the body, just destroys everything. Heavy metals, especially mercury. Most of us, like if a lot of people had a lot of mercury issues back in the day, I think we're like most dentists are clearing this out, but we used to get mercury fillings in our mouth. Mm -hmm. And I remember taking... I remember taking a HLC holistic lifestyle coach course with um, this guy, JP Sears, one of Paul checks, our protégés, protégés, sorry. And we had a video of somebody having a mercury filling in their mouth and it was under like this special camera and you can actually see the fumes coming up off the mercury, creating issues. And the person had like, you know, dementia, Alzheimer's, he was like young. He was like probably in his forties and he had all these mercury fillings all over his mouth. And you can see like, again, under that camera, like all these fumes going into his brain, into his bloodstream. And none of the doctors could fix it out, figure it out. So a lot of people they have all these neurological issues, but once they get the mercury taken out, all these fillings taken yeah. out, yeah. chances are they can go back to a, go back to a normal life. So if you have any mercury fillings, first thing is first, you get, the, get that shit out of your mouth. That's, so bad for you and what actually makes it worse is if you have different types of metals in your mouth you might have mercury on one side i forgot what the other ones they use um but if you have two different metals it's like two different acids kind of mixing together and it causes like this super toxic chemical compound that just gets released throughout the body so making sure go to you want to go to a you want to go to a good dentist there's very few dentists that i that i know that are i don't i don't want to say good I won't go to a dentist that thinks fluoride is good for you, you know, or I go to, you know, I want, I want somebody to go that will look at all the fillings that people have, or, you know, use more natural ways. Um, so that's it. Yeah. As far as like heavy metal toxicity, um, pesticides, like herbicides, fungicides, rodenticides, that plays a huge role in your, in our body. And we what talked are those? about, what is that? What are those? Like stuff they spend break crops with or try to keep animals away from crops from eating it you know we've seen like you know these people in like space suits you know spraying these crops out in fields and like, the government's like oh yeah hey, it's, it's okay you know it's safe for you otherwise we're, and then, then right. you look at it they have like masks on they're all like in these white coats and <laughs> spraying these toxic sprays but don't worry it's good for you guys like the hazmat you know? suits you yeah know, the hazmat, hazmat suits, suits. Jesus yeah, and again, we we talked about we did a two part um, um, podcast wow. about, on glyphosate. Yeah, man. So, like, if you guys want to go back to that, that's one of the major issues that people have, in my opinion, that people are so diseases are an all time high is because of glyphosate and nutrient deficiency is a big one too. Most people don't eat clean, organic, grass fed foods, and yeah. if they do, I think a big component they're missing is they're not eating according to their metabolic type. You know, they're not eating the foods that they should be eating the food. And again, we're kind of, you know, everything's a full circle, right? Right. So if you're not eating according to your metabolic type, you're putting the wrong fuel in your body, you know? So it kind of takes your body as like a car. You're putting diesel gas in a Lamborghini. Yeah, it's gas. But the, the, ener the, the fuel for the car or the energy here 
is not is not making the transition to make the car move more efficiently. You're just basically just clunking out all over the place. Yeah, man. You have something to say? It looks like you paid something. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff, man. Yeah, so uh, there is a lot of stuff, and I I, I want to park it on the gut biome. I want to I want to park yeah. it on the gut yeah. period because I think there there's a lot there, and at the same time, like mm -hmm. it's central space. And and when, as you were, as you were talking about how I'm seeing this is that, you know, if there if there is a lack of healthy or or positive bacteria in the gut. It's going to create an inefficiency in how the whole system, aka your body, is operating. Yeah, it's everything heavy. emanates from the pore uh, outwards. Everything yeah. emanates from the gut outwards. Interesting. Yep. That, okay. that, that, that's the way. That's the best way. Start with start. With, everybody I, I work with, you know, no matter if they, they have shin splints or they have you know headaches, I always or they just want to lose weight. I always work with the gut, no matter what it is. Yeah, you're you're only your body's only as good as the as the food and the nutrients that you put into it. Yeah, this is true, man. And and my you know my mind just keeps going to like especially as the topic is fatigue. It's like when there's when there's unhealthy bacteria in the gut, there's basically sludge. It's making and I think you mentioned it before where it's like you're walking in sludge. It's like the body is operating in sludge. Yeah. So it's like taxing the mitochondria. It's ta like I'm seeing it as like taxing the mitochondria, which is destroying it. But then it's also taxing all the other organs that are looking to detox the body, but also process the nutrients that are coming into it. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. very. It's it's like man, I, I'm just. It's hitting me how how important the environment in the gut is, especially when it comes to fatigue, because. I, and I'm, I'm bringing this, especially coming from a nutrition standpoint, looking at the fact of like what we talked about with glyphosate, um, what's happening as far as the um, fast food industry, uh, how the animals are being treated, right? Like the, 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 that's a whole other episode, but there's a yeah. lot of, there's a lot of things that are going on with the needs that we have in our society today. If people are failing to say, okay, I want to make sure that this is an organic um, me, this is why I grew beef for something that's higher quality to make sure that it may it can um, continue to maintain a healthy environment in the belly, right? However, yeah. for majority of our culture, that's that's far from happening, right? It's like most people are having fast food, like it's like, hey, there's a special on this or that. The food is unhealthy; it's creating um, chaos in the gut. So now they're now it's creating more of a fatigue because usually they'll overeat. Mm -hmm. Right, there's it's yeah. new, it's, it's it's free of nutrients in the food, so they overeat, they're overtaxing the body, and now I'm like this, yeah. <laughs> and I know everybody's had it, usually it happens on Thanksgiving, right? B, but like, yo, yeah. I know everybody's had a thing. Maybe you go to Forno's down in Newark, you're like, yo, I gotta finish this paella, and you just eat oh. yourself, and you're just sitting there, like, yeah, and that's why people need, like, you know. Well, cups of coffee a day, you know, just to wake their ass up. You know, they wake up, they're just like, all right. Like, first thing they do is reach for the pot of coffee, Bruh. which dehydrates even more, which makes you more sluggish. And then they start having, like, they start going to the doctor, and the doctor's like, oh, you probably need, like, you know, a, you know, this drug or this drug, or you go to a supplement store, or you Google, like, I need B12 vitamins, you know? So now they start doing, like, a, a vitamin B cocktail. But if you just s clean up your diet, and I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. They're like this is this is my field. This is what this is what I'm passionate about. So I do a lot of research. And if you've ever been to a food lot before, which I've been to, it's disturbing, man. It's it's lot? it's bad. Like, like, what do you mean by like where they like, like where they where they where they do like cattle feeds and oh, the okay. way they, yeah. they they butcher their animals? Yeah. And I've been to them before where these animals they're literally sitting in their own piss their own shit wow. they're they the way they raise animals these days they don't raise them by how many they are they raise them by how much they weigh so they literally feed it i'm not even kidding you they feed it cement dust sawdust sewage urine feces they inject it with antibiotics which is like one of the worst things you can put in your body soy anything to fatten it up and then we're putting this in our body and we're expecting this food to give us energy 
the, to me, if you know that, or if you've been to one of these things and you're still, I'm not saying, listen, everyone has a one-off. Hey, let's go to get some pizza. Let's go to McDonald's every once in a while. It happens. But if you consistently do this and this is 90, 80% of your diet, like, I don't feel bad for you, man. Later on in life, like people are like, oh, it's so expensive. You know, it's expensive, man. Missing work because you're getting chemo done. You know, yep. it's expensive. <laughs> you know, like you go, you're, oh. you're on 12 different medications, man. And you're, and you got to deal with our medical health care. You got to deal with our health care system. You can't put a price <laughs> on that. You either pay a little bit now or you pay a lot more later, man. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. This is so, man, so much here, so much here. And Coming back to fatigue because I want to go so many places at this. We have to do like a fatigue base and then go. Yeah, um, I can easily go off on many rants. So oh you know, man, oh man, oh, my many man. talents. Listen, I can too. That's why I'm like, <laughs> wait, I was going to. Talk. Yeah, so I want to put. So this is this is interesting because when Brian, you know, if you've seen the podcast before, you already know Brian and I do our pregame, right? So we were talking about like having like the science, you know, physical yeah. and then going into the spiritual and metaphysical and all these things. And I think it's very interesting. Like I want to, I want to still stay on the gut piece and what you just said, right? Because I was watching this uh, Netflix show. You are what you eat. Mm. Have you seen this? Yes. Have you seen it? Yeah. yeah. You have seen yeah, it? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yep. So when the chicken guy, the guy that used to raise chickens was talking about his, like what he saw, what, cause it was his place. Mm -hmm. I love how he plants mush. I love how he does mushrooms now too, by the way. That's so fair. <laughs> um, yeah. So what's the spoiler alert, but I want to come back. Yeah. So like, t t think wh why I'm bringing this up is because like when Brian was talking about the conditions of the animals in this beef that we're eating, uh, when we look at, because I'm an energy guy, right? Like I, I, like we both, Brian and I are both nerds about a lot of things. And like one of the things I'm nerd, I nerd out about is like the energetics, the energy behind the things that we're eating in, in all things. So when I looked up this um, about the metaphysical feeling of fatigue, some of the things that came up are being in the stress situation. Right. Like, so, for example, the body is always on high alert. The body is always on survival mode. So when you think when I think about these the conditions of these animals, they are in this condition. Like, think about if you were in a space that's about the size of a New York City bedroom with 150 people, you couldn't freaking move to take a piss or take a mm -hmm. doo doo. So you're pissing doo-doo on yourself. And then you got some other cat over here that's throwing up. <laughs> okay. And then another cat over here that's just freaking, that just died. Reminds me of Times Square on New Year's Eve. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's <laughs> I've been there. Example. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed, bro. <laughs> so you see what I'm saying? It's like, and think about that yeah. kind of stress. You're like, like, especially as I get older, I don't like cramped places, man. Yeah, I mean, like, you'll yeah. see me, I'll go off in a corner where I can freaking move around. Bro, sometimes I don't even <laughs> like going to the car wash. I'm like, I got to breathe so I don't have a panic attack. Yeah. But like, I'm saying this because these energies start to come up. These are the energies that can create a fatigue, okay? Because what happens is your adrenal system is constantly on. You're thinking that something's about to happen. Right. So you all think about if you always got a key. I don't know if anybody's done boxing before, but that junk will wear your shoulders down. If you're not conditioned, you're going to be like, pop, 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 pop. you're going to catch yeah. it. Right. So the thing, do, there's a there's a conditioning that all of a sudden, like the more I try, the more I try to keep myself up or the more I'm in these stressful circumstances, the more fatigue is um, the more I'm, I'm tiring myself. I'm, I'm fatiguing. And this is, if you think about what's happening with these animals, like they have that energy in them, they get slaughtered. Now that energy comes in us. And it's, it's very, it's very interesting, man, because like, there's so many things that go into the, the space of fatigue that, uh, you know, we've presented a lot of information so far. We still have some more to present. I just want people to recognize that there may be some of you out there that are like beating yourself up because you have you are unable to find the energy 
the power to do what you need to do in a day, okay? Please give yourself grace and hear what we're saying. Everything you're doing, great. Maybe it's about tweaking some things in your diet, in how you manage stress in your environment, and how you're taking care of yourself, like how you're noticing your how you're noticing what's around you and what you're taking in. I think I said that already, but you know, whatever. Um, B, I want to just pause for a second, man, because like uh, I was talking a lot there, but like when you think about, especially when people are eating these these types of things or they're experiencing the type of food or that that we've talked about and the kind of the things around like the glyphosate things like this. Yeah. Like, what do you see as like the first step to course correct? Yeah, I would. For one of the things, oh, like one other thing that you know, kind of. The, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so other things that cause like mitochondrial deficiency. Yeah. Is like drugs, like anti-diabetic drugs. Okay. Cholesterol lowering oh. drugs like statins. And we talk about statins, which actually, you know, they raise the chance of heart disease, not prevent it. It kills something called CoQ10, which is huge for a uh, mitochondria uh, making of mitochondria. So if you if you're if you're on a statin, like we talked about before, if you're one of those one of four people over the age of 44 that's on a statin, you can't make mitochondria because it statin kills the CoQ10. Antidepressants, SSRIs, that kills your mitochondria. Pain medication, any kind of NSAID, uh, non-steroid anti-inflammatory uh, drugs, Tylenol, Advil, ibuprofen, all that stuff, antibiotics, anti-cancer drugs, that all kills your mitochondria in your body. So what I do is a when I when I work with somebody, man, I go like I go deep with them. So I want to know exactly what medication they're on, and then. I find out what vitamins that medication depletes it in. So somebody might come to me and be like, Hey, listen, like I take this drug, I take this drug, I take this drug. And I look at the side effects. Oh, it might cause a headache. And I'd be like, okay, because that's because, you know, for example, it's lowering vitamin B12 is lowering zinc is lowering magnesium. So I just be like, Hey, just to let you know, this drug is lowering these vitamins. You might want to add some of these nutrients back in your diet because you don't get the deficiency of a zinc, of a B vitamin, of a magnesium, which will just slow everything down even more. So I try to educate people on that every kind of medication that you're taking, I don't, I don't tell people to come off medications. The only thing I really say is I'm a little more straightforward with statins because they're just trash in my, you know, not even my opinion, it's just a fact. <laughs> you know, you feel, man? Do you feel? Yeah. Up? But everything else, I be like, hey, listen, let's figure, let's figure it out, yeah. so you don't you you don't feel worse than you already do. And a lot of times, like people come to me after working out with them, be like, oh, I have, I'm having headaches or I'm getting stomach pains and everything like that. And I'll look at the side effects and be like, hey, the side effects of this drug is headaches and and stomach pains and whatever else you're you're coming down with. As you work with me, you're going to get healthier. So if a healthy person takes a drug, the side effects become more pronounced. This is when I tell you, hey, go back to your doctor, get your tests all done again. Maybe you don't need this drug and we can kind of wean you off it. Yeah. So that's the way I try to educate people. Basically, any kind of drug you take, it's going to have a, it's going to deplete something in your body. So know what that's going to deplete so you can put that back in, hopefully through Whole Foods. If you, if you don't have the time or I don't want to say lazy or anything like that to cook it. At least put it in this kind of supplement form to kind of balance out the playing field a little bit. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So, like, what I'm, what I'm also hearing is you're you're giving the person an opportunity to experience the differences in getting healthier and also becoming aware of what they're taking in their body and the impacts that it has. Yeah, yeah. I try to empower everybody as much as I possibly can. I don't want like my job as a coach to kind of like not only tell you what you need to know but like i want you to like i want to educate you i want you to be aware of what's what's going on yeah yeah that's what's up man i i i dig that man i really i think that's very important for people to understand 
Um, yeah. Especially when it comes to like the energy deficiency and depletion. Like what you're, what are you taking in is the big, is the lesson I'm hearing here and, and being aware of all of its range. So while there's, yeah. there's um, the advertisement of like, well, listen, I'm going to have you take this because it will help with this. So you always got to look at it. I, I always like to look at things as a range, Brian, right? So, so while it has a benefit yeah. up here, it's also got a pitfall. <laughs> like, okay, what is it? Now, what do I need to eat? So it's like everything that you take in as far as a medication will have a side effect. Definitely. I want to keep people like, I'm sorry, what do you say, bud? No, I was like, do I, do I, I'm like, do I know all the side effects of my blood pressure meds? Like, yeah, you should you should look at it. And well, like that up. and that up, man. that's something like you wanna you wanna come armed when you're talking to your doctor. Again, like we, we've had this conversation, I'm not gonna beat a dead horse, but the doctors don't really have too much education when it comes to nutrition. You know, here's a pill for this problem, here's a pill for that problem. So I want you to when you go in the doctor's office and he wants to say, for example, put you on a statin, I want you to be the doctor and be like, Hey, listen, I have no problem going on a statin, but you know, it's going to make my cells rigid. It's going to cause leakage in all my cells. It's going to lower my LDL, which uh, it's actually not a cholesterol. It's one of the most powerful antioxidants in my blood vessels. It's going to deplete all my bile salts so I can't break down my food. What are we going to do about that? So come there with some kind of like, Man. don't just sit there. Most people just go to their doctor and doctor's like, oh, I want you to go on this. I want you to go on this and go on this. And they're just like bobbleheads. They're like, yes. Okay. <laughs> you know? They don't, they, I mean, you yeah. know. Yeah, and that's the reason why we're, you know, we have the highest health care by far and we're ranked like 40 is something in efficiency. Yeah, well. Because it, it's not working. No, it's not working. You know, you bring up a really fascinating word, the efficiency, especially when we're talking about fatigue and energy, right? Because, uh, yeah, this is, this. Uh, thank you for bringing that up, man, because like if, as we're talking about this, I think it's important in, in light of what you're saying, with being aware of 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 what we're putting in our body and the impacts that it has, what's our efficiency with the energy that we have, which I think is also plays a big role in our in our nutrition and like our our gut biome, right? Like uh, how you say, like just what's the environment in our gut, and what's the environment in our space? Because you know we talk we talk about the food and how if we're eating poorly. And we're failing to have the correct nutrients or, or the nutrients for ourselves. Or we're failing to eat the way our bodies are designed to eat. There's going to be an inefficiency in how we're using our energy, which yeah. is going to bring on fatigue, right? If yeah. you're, it's, it's like it's like if one organ is off, there's going to be other organs that are going to take over, and then eventually, over time, they will burn out. <laughs> it's yeah. like, you know, Definitely. I saw that same thing. I saw that happen with my mom. And I think what's very what's what's why I bring this up is because in our culture, it's a conditioning to keep going. Right? It's a conditioning like, yo, no, you just gotta hustle harder, you gotta do this. And like, listen, that is hustling is is important, right? That's got that's got its place in its role. If the thing is, is if you're failing to take care of yourself and your energy is depleted or you have a lot of anxiety and stress, you're gonna create fatigue and you're gonna run yourself down, man, and you're gonna be running inefficient. Yeah, uh, I think in our society, in our society these days, you know, people will, people will drive themselves into the ground and they want to work harder and harder and harder, just so they can kind of wear this like badge of honor, you know? What yeah. I mean, so they can tell everybody like, "Oh, how was your day? Oh man, it was so rough. Um, oh, it was terrible. I had this and this and this and oh, and they they want like almost like sympathy, like, oh yeah, you keep going, you keep getting them. Where it's like, you no, know, oh, man, you just have you have poor control over your life. I mean, I'm not saying every day, I'm not saying once in a while you shouldn't have tough days. Everyone has it. But if you're noticing like months and years are going by and every day is like, you know, like I said, like dragging a cannon behind you, <laughs> you know, you need to look at yourself in the mirror and, and do something about it. You know, you working hard is one thing, but working smart is another way. Is another uh, way. Working efficiently is another way. What's that? I know a lot of people. I know, working efficiently. I know a lot of people that work hard, but they don't go nowhere. That's not efficient. It's not efficient. You know, figure figure something out. Yeah, you know? and the thing that the what's really interesting about this is that when people start to really figure things out, they have to slow things down. Yeah. Right? And again, it's like like learning how you master how you work with your energy. 
people, um, you know, it's it's very it's very wild how we look at things, man. It really is like a badge of honor. Like, oh man, I had this bad day. But again, this like when I look at this metaphysical piece, uh, and, and you say about like, okay, I just want to be able to commiserate. Like, oh yeah, it was rough. I I want you to pat my back and tell me how good I am and how much I gotta get. Through. What's that really doing, man? That's causing more anxiety and stress because that's what you want. You want to work hard. You you, you or you want to burn yourself out. Right. And then that's a problem because, listen, people, when it comes down to it, um, and Brian, you said this before, if we're feeling if if we're experiencing fatigue. And you think you're doing everything correctly. You get your rest. It's short lived. You're like, what the hell was that? Guess what? Something is wrong. Your body's always signaling you. Always it's signaling you. Up. Yeah. I swear to goodness, B. People. Psh, yeah. It's, always it's, not, it's, not, it's not a caffeine deficiency. It's not a, you know, drug def- deficiency. It's something in your lifestyle that's it's depleting something in your body. It's you know? drawing on you. Go ahead, buddy. Yeah. Sorry. No, no, I mean, I was going to kind of go back to like, you know, things that, you know, that I, I work with people. For, I mean, first thing I always do, most people are on medication. So I always kind of try to figure out what are the uh, vitamin deficiencies they're going to get out of that. One of the next things I do is I kind of I take a look at their diet. You know, I want to make sure they're having enough, I guess, uh, like fatty fish in their diet or f- good omega, uh, good fats in their diet. So like oily fish avocados, coconut oil, olive oil, flaxseed oil, wanting to make sure they're eating according to their metabolic type. Uh, supplements, three, hey, three main supplements, CoQ10. Yeah, go ahead, bud. Right, right. Before we go on with the CoQ10 and the supplements, what's the benefit of having fat, like having fat in the diet in relation to like the energy pr- production? Yeah, most people don't eat enough fat, especially if they're trying to lose weight because they think fat makes them fat. Right. So like, you know, 50% of your cell membrane is fat. <laughs> yeah. So if people, you're trying to cut out fat, you're going to have a cell that's not running efficiently. So putting some good fat in there, it's good for like anti-inflammatory. Most people have too much omega-6s compared to omega-3s. You want to have about a two to one, you know, three to one maybe of omega-3s to omega-6s. Uh, too much omega-6s, so you have, you have too much inflammation in your body omega-3 kind of cooled down it's so good for your brain i forgot what percentage of your brain off the top of your head is fat i want to say like 70 percent or something like that so it's like if you're depleting fat you're depleting your cells you're depleting your brain you're it's just like it's leaking all over the place so that'll help just make an overall more optimal efficient cell which will help you make more optimal efficient mitochondria which leads to atp which gives you more energy Bless her. Thank you, man. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, man. Yeah. So you left off at cold. So you're starting going to supplements. And you yeah, supplements like yeah, CoQ10, resveratrol. We talked about in a past episode with longevity. The grapes. The grapes yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Omega threes, something called alpha lipoic acid, and B vitamins. They all prevent oxidative stress in the mitochondria. So throwing that all in there is going to play is going to have a big role. One thing I would say, unless you're willing to change your diet, I would stay away from supplements. We talked about this in the last episode, how supplements play maybe a 3 to a 5% role in your diet. For 80%, 85% is probably like your, your macros, portions, of eating good quality food. So I'd rather you save your money with the supplements, start eating organic, grass-fed beef as much as you can, animal products, organic food, organic vegetables and fruits. Just make sure that glyphosate isn't on there. Drinking good, clean water, cutting out as much like processed sugar as you possibly can, not eating too much fructose. Um, if you don't know what, if you don't, you're like, why is fructose bad? Look back at our uric acid video we did right before this one. We talked about how fructose is a, you know, a key player in a lot of metabolic diseases. So I always I always start with that as far as nutrition goes. Again, metabolic type, know what your metabolic type is. Go back to episode two, do the questionnaire, see if you're a protein mix or a carb. Add some little bit of fats in there. If you start doing everything good, it'll start clearing up your gut. 
then you start adding like some CoQ10, resveratrol, omega-3s, ALAs, B vitamins in your diet. And that'll be the nutrient start. That'll be the nutritional start. Then from there, I would go into more lifestyle factors. Sleep, huge. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's that's everything. So, we, you know, your circadian rhythm, right? Yeah, yeah. So basically your circadian rhythm is from 10 p.m. at night to 6 o'clock in the morning, right? From 10 to 2, your body goes through a physical repair. Six a, um, 2 a.m. to 6 a.m., your body goes through a psychological repair. So all your mitochondria, they heal during that 10 to 2 ratio. Okay. So if you're up every night and just for, uh, so people, even if you get, even if you go to bed every night, say 12, say 12 o'clock, you're missing that two hours of repair. You can sleep the next 20 hours. Your body won't repair. That's the window that you have is between 10 and two. Mm. So yeah, you're, you're missing, you're missing a big chunk. You're missing a big chunk out of that. It's, it, I can't say it enough. If you have a fatigue, you have to get to bed before 10, 10 30. You gotcha. have to be, you have to be asleep before that. Figure huh. something out. If you go to sleep late every night, you're, you're, you're missing out on something. Mm. You're what? Well, you're missing you out on, get that on rest and repair, man. Exactly. You're going to feel like crap. No matter what you do, you're going to feel like crap. Body can't heal. No. Nah. Hey, B, you, I want to come back to something you said that. So I'm like, damn, man, I'm, I can't believe this is the first time I'm mentioning this podcast about oxidative stress. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just want to come back to that because I think it's important, but because this is basically like an imbalance in the body between like our free radicals and like antioxidants in the body. Correct. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's basically yeah. like these, this oxidative stress, like breaks down the body. Correct. Yeah. Break yeah. Think about like uh, a good analogy would be like, you know, you have your antioxidants and are always at a battle with your, with your uh, free radicals. Mm -hmm, if you have mm -hmm. too much free radicals, not enough antioxidants, you create oxidative stress. And thinking of oxidative stress is like, like uh, remember we used to ride bikes back in the day, you leave your bike out in the rain for a couple of weeks and, you, and, the, and the, the chain is all rusted up. Yeah, yep. exactly. Yeah. Basically you're just, you know, an analogy would be like you have rusted cells. You have too much oxidative stress. So you kind of want to balance out that ratio. Yeah. And, and I, I think it's important. I'm glad we got. I'm glad we got to talk about that because it's one of the symptoms of oxidative stress is fatigue, wrinkles, muscle soreness, muscle joint pain. Like, hello, people. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> pay attention. Pay attention. This stuff. And again, listen to what it is. The stress, right? So if, if and and we're all there's stress is inevitable in life. You have your U stress. You have your D stress. The thing is, how are you managing these stressors? What's the way that you're managing? Some people manage them by getting shitty food. Yeah. Because it helps them stuff their feelings. Okay. And you're stuffing and clogging up a whole lot of a whole lot of other stuff too. Yeah. So like pay attention to what's happening. Um, and like Brian, you mentioned the key thing. Get your freaking sleep. I'm talking to myself, people. Um, because like, I'll stay up, I'll start reading something or I'll watch something or it's like, I'm um, working on something and I'll stay up a little later than usual. And then I'm trying to get up early in the morning. I've been doing a better job of like, you know, I'm going to sleep a little bit later. I'm going to get up by a certain time. Like I move my clock, my clock forward, I guess. Um, because I've been going to bed like around 11, 1130. Still mm -hmm. got to get better with that B. Yeah. Not bad though, man. It's not bad. It's not bad. Man, you One know, more I, hour. I do, yeah, it's an hour. And then, you know what's wild is that the, uh, what day was it? Today's is, is Thursday. So it was, uh, it was Tuesday. Yeah, it was Tuesday. Bro, I got to bed at 10 o'clock. My sheets felt all good and stuff, man. I was like, ooh, wait. And it uh, felt good because I just woke up naturally at 545. I woke up. No, it was yeah. like 530. I just, before my alarm, I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. I think it feels great, man. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like crap today, man. I mean, I, I woke up at three o'clock this morning, man. I'm still on jet lag. I'm still in Hawaii, man. I woke up and I've been up and right now it's almost a little after eight o'clock. I'm like, man, I'm ready. You're dozing off here, man. So yeah, like I went to the gym time. today. Yeah. I had a couple of clients I trained and I got to the gym. I was like, all right, my time to work out. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to cause more stress in my body if I, if I work out. So I just kind of 
went downstairs, had a had a good meal, and uh, nice. you know, drank a big thing of water and just kind of chilled and sat quiet. Yeah. Went in the sauna for a little bit, and that's another thing. Speaking of gym, like one of the best things you can do to improve your mitochondria is get a get a workout in. Now, what I mean by a workout, like I don't expect you to. I'm not saying I'm a great athlete or work, but work or, or I'm saying not saying work as tough as I do or lift weights as heavy as I do, but like on a scale, of like one to 10, 10 being like, you're going to puke all over yourself when you're leaving the gym, zero being like, you're I'm like, a, we're using as much energy right now talking. You should be about a six or a seven for your, for your perception. Yep. I see people that come to the gym and they bring a book with them or they bring a latte with them. And they're sitting on a bike. I'm like, what are you doing? And people are like, oh, at least it's better than nothing. I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. I think you can use that hour a little differently, you know? Most so likely, yes. Maybe go home and prep some food and maybe eat a little better throughout the week to give you more energy. So instead of being at a two, you can be at a six or a seven. Like push yourself, push yourself. Wow. You can't, You can't repair your mitochondria. You can't build a strong immune system by doing half-ass work. If you're not willing to like at least push yourself to like again like a six or seven most days when you're in the gym, I'd rather you know you're better off just staying home, yeah. and you know something else is gonna it's gonna give you more energy. People well, just like to say they work out. I think I went to the gym today. Oh man, this guy works out. Yeah, no. <laughs> right. You're like building yourself, man. Yeah. See, bro. Yep. Like, no, this guy works out. No, he just read. He read basically on this yeah. bike. Right? I get people that are in the gym three hours a day. Oh, I'm working out three hours a day. Trust me, man, you ain't working out three hours a day. You That's combine it. all that, you combine all that down to something you're probably doing 20 minutes. There's no way you're pushing yourself at a six or seven, three hours a day. No, not even sweating. Bro. Very few people can do that. Very few people can do that. <laughs> not even sweating. <laughs> and not even sweating, man. Like, yo, man, you're like, yeah. bro, come on, man. Listen, yeah. people, Brian, this was a good one, man. I hope so. Brian, what's the what's what's the main thing you want to, want people to take away from this episode today about like energy and fatigue and how they take care of themselves? I'm hoping a lot of the tips that we gave here will, will help you give like a a good foundation of to figure out why you have low energy. Listen, all of us have low energy every once in a while. Like today, man, my day is shot. I'm exhausted. But if you're doing this every single day, feeling like this, just know that. Your whole health, like I said before, it all depends on your mitochondria. It all depends on your energy. If you have low energy all the time, it's going to lead to a disease. It, um, there's no way, there's no sh- cookie cutter, or I'm sorry, sugar coating way to say this. It's going to lead to a disease. You need you need to start taking a little bit of health responsibility. And that's all we preach here. Take responsibility for yourself. Learn, educate. Hopefully you took some notes here. Start start working with your diet. Start fixing that microbiome in your gut. You know, if you're on any kind of medication, you know, do some vitamin research and see what vitamins are getting depleted in. Mm. Do your metabolic testing diet. Get your ass to bed before 10 o'clock, 10, 10 30. You know, and everything that Paul said, like, you know, with, with the with the whole metaphysical, you know, get your mind in a good spot. I think uh, one of one of the one interesting thing that always got what I remember was working with Paul Check. He's like, I don't have. He's like, I haven't been sick in thirty something years. I don't. I don't get a cold. He goes, I can't. It's like I don't have time for that. He's like, I'm living my dream. I'm not living anybody else's dream. I'm living my dream. I know what my purpose is. And when you figure out your dream, you figure out your purpose. You have so much energy in your body that diseases can't live illnesses can't live and it was very powerful a lot of people are probably rolling their eyes like yeah oh, whatever you know but that always stuck with me and i'm not saying you're never going to have an issue i think paul's on a on another level he does a lot of crazy stuff in his routine and his daily routines but if you're living someone else's dream how can you be excited for that how can you be how can you be pumped for that how can you wake up every morning and be like, yeah, man, you know, come to work and love your job. Oh man. I, I like my job. I don't love it. 
<laughs> I love traveling. I love being Hawaii, man. I don't like waking up at <laughs> five o'clock every morning, you know. <laughs> Deal with you know BS as an entrepreneur. I don't, you know, but you know, you know what I mean. Yeah, bro. Yeah, man. Find that... out what makes you happy. Find out, you know, your purpose. And you need a lot of introspective work for that to happen. You know, we, we talked about that in past episodes with meditation and calming the mind. Mm. I think that, that that's a that's a good starting point. Yeah, bro. Man. Oh man, B, thanks for that, man. Um uh my the the takeaway for me, that Paul Check one you just laid on us, man, that was that's deep. That's yeah, that, that, that hit me hard. Man. I was like 15 years ago. I, st I still think about that. That's deep. I'm, I'm, yeah. Oh man, that's deep. Um, yeah, you hit me with that one, man. I'm gonna, pro I'm gonna be processing that one. Uh, I, the thing, the thing, the takeaway that I want people to hear is get out of the sludge. Get out of your sludge, man. Um, look at like, and Brian, you mentioned it. Take a look at your diet, like stay out of judgment and really look at things objectively and see what's going on. What's what are these things that you're putting into your body in your internal environment and in your external environment? Are they helping you to run efficiently and smooth? Or are they clogging you down? Are they bogging you down? Are they weighing you down? Also look at like, look at what's going on in your life. I said the external environment, like, man, are you, are you living on purpose? Is something stressing you out and weighing you down? Are you pushing against something that is not moving? Pay attention. Get rid of the sludge. There's a lot of things that can be contributing to your energy. And Brian hit it right on the head. I hope I think that we laid out a lot of things for you all today that will give you some, uh, some starting points. And as always, B and I are here. More than black or white uh, podcast at gmail.com. Actually, I think it's correction more than black or white at gmail.com. And uh, listen, we're here. Leave some notes, leave some comments. Tell us what resonated with you. And you, you think this is valuable? You think this is valuable? Then like, share, and comment, and subscribe to the channel. We're looking to get to a, we're just looking to get more people, man. The more people subscribe, the more it gets out there. The more it gets out there. So thank you all for showing up. For those that are new, thank you for joining us. Hope to see you again soon. And B, any last words, man? We'll be done. That's it, man. Let's wrap it up. It's bedtime for me, man. Bedtime for Brian and Paul. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> B, get your ass to sleep, man. We got a party on Saturday, man. All right? That's it, buddy. All right, everybody. Thanks. See you next time. Peace.